welcome to On One Inspiration. My name's Colby Brown, and I'm a landscape travel and humanitarian photographer based out of the East Coast of the U.S. Now, over the last 11 years, I've worked for some of the biggest names in the photo industry, including working for National Geographic as a photo instructor in South America. Now, these days, I own two of my own companies, including The Giving Lens, an organization that blends the idea of photo education with support for sustainable development initiatives in developing countries around the world. To learn more about The Giving Lens, visit www.thegivinglens.com. Now, many of you might not know this, but this is actually the fourth or fifth On One inspiration that I've put together for On One over the last few years. And every time I get asked to put these together, I get excited because it gives me the opportunity to talk about something that I'm passionate about. And these days, that idea is storytelling. In a day and age where a photograph is no longer a dime a dozen, but more like a dime a billion, your images need to have something special, something unique to really capture people's attention and pull them into your frame. The idea of visual storytelling from a photographer's perspective is all about changing your mindset. Every choice you make out in the field from your choice of subject matter to composition to exposure should be done for a reason, for a purpose. And the same thing goes for the post-processing side. Every time I move a contrast slider or adjust the saturation or sharpness of my image, it should be done for a purpose, for a reason. And to me, that comes down to enhancing the story of my subject, or of my image in this case. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, let's jump into On One Photo Raw and take a look at this image from Death Valley. Now, you might not notice it, but this photograph was actually taken at Zabriskie Point, a very popular spot in Death Valley National Park, as I just mentioned. Now, most of the time you see this subject photographed, you're looking at it straight on, which is from the standard viewing area. This is where the, the peak right here of Zabriskie Point looks more like a fin or a shark fin or something like that, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, my focus today is on storytelling, the idea of creating photography or images with intent, with purpose. And so let's talk about that a little bit. Now, if we come up here into the info panel, you can see that I used a Canon 1D Mark IV to take this image. I used a Carl Zeiss 21mm f2.8 ZE lens. I use an ISO of 100, 8 second exposure, and f11. So let's talk about a couple of those different settings. Now I chose ISO 100 because I wanted the cleanest detail and colors, and typically the lower ISO you use, the better you're going to come off. The 8 second exposure was chosen specifically because this image was taken during the pre-dawn hour, so there wasn't a lot of light in this given scene anyway. An 8 second exposure gave me a good balance between mid-tones, shadows, and highlights, and so I ran with that. And my choice of f11 was meant essentially because for most wide angle lenses f11 is kind of the sweet spot it's where you get kind of the sharpest details from corner to corner with a lot of lenses including this carl zeiss 21 millimeter now when it comes to composition and subject matter i really wanted to focus my attention on all the patterns and colors you see here at the foreground or the base of zabriskie point itself and especially at this unique angle and this unique composition i was really able to pull all those into this composition to me, it created a more compelling image and therefore a more compelling story for the subject of this beautiful light hitting this nice soft mountain in Death Valley this morning a few years ago when I took this image. Now, if you've been using On One Photo Raw for a while, you might notice a few little changes here to the graphical interface or the user interface here in the develop module. And that's because I'm using the 2017.5 pre-release version, which is coming out any day now. And in it, there's a handful of changes that I know On One is going to cover in detail, but I wanted to cover a few ones really quick. Now here in the develop module, you will now see that we have a detail panel, and in it you have both sharpening and noise reduction. Now both of these are global adjustments because they're in the develop module, so they're going to affect the entire image. But it's nice that they're here and it's easy to access. Before they were separate, and now they're together. Now one of the most requested features for On One Photo Raw is now what we see here as lens corrections. Now, if I go ahead and click this blue box to apply the effect, you can see that On One Photo Raw recognized that I used the Zeiss 21mm f2.8 ZE lens and made the appropriate corrections to adjust for uh, distortion, vignetting, and things like that. Now the image has a much more dynamic feel and doesn't feel so rounded, which typically happens with wide-angle lenses. So let's get back to the image at hand. Now, one of the problems with photography these days is that photographers feel that there's a disconnect between the choices they make out in the field as well as what they do in the post-processing phase of creating their images. In truth, there should be a connection between the two. My choice of composition and exposure should be correlated or at least be reflected in how I choose to process my image. 
So being that I wanted to focus my attention on all the patterns and colors and textures found here at the foreground and all this beautiful soft light, I need to take that into account in how I process this image. So let's go ahead and begin. Starting here in the develop module, we're going to make a few global adjustments which affect all the different aspects of this image before we start stylizing our image in the effects panel. To start things off, let's go ahead and pull the hay slider down just a bit to clean up this image and give it a little bit more pop. Now that looks pretty good, but let's go ahead and keep adjusting things. I want to start things off by pulling up the exposure slider just a little bit to bring a little bit more light into this image. At the same time, let's go ahead and pull down the highlight slider to continue to balance out the overall exposure and give us a little bit more focus on these patterns and colors here. Next, let's make some minor adjustments to the blacks and white slider, pulling them down and up respectively. Now essentially what I'm trying to do is find a nice balance between the tonal contrast found within this image using the haze slider as well as the rest of these global adjustments, although we'll certainly stylize things a little bit more using tonal contrast in the effects panel soon. Next, let's go ahead and bring up the saturation and vibrant sliders just a touch to get us started on adding a little bit of color back into this image. There, that looks pretty good, but we certainly have a ways to go. Now before we move into the effects panel, I want to quickly clean up these two little dust spots or little pieces of dirt that were on my sensor. To do so, go ahead and click on this band-aid icon over here in the left hand, the retouch brush and then simply click on the two different areas and let them work their magic. Just like that, those two distracting elements are gone. This is a great tool to use if you have dust spots or little pieces of dust on your sensor that you didn't realize was there from the beginning. Now that that's done, let's jump into the effects panel. Go ahead and click on add filter. and Let's go ahead and select tone enhancer. Now what I wanna do is add a little bit of tonal contrast back into this image in a stylized way. So to do so, let's go ahead and click on the More button, and then go down to Dark Contrast. Now right off the bat, I noticed that it applied contrast a little too heavily. So I'm going to do two different things. First, I'm going to pull up the Compression Slider just a little bit. This allows me to minimize the contrast between the white and the black points, and really raise things up a little bit, pulling up some of that shadow detail in a very minute and subtle way. Next, I want to go ahead and pull down the Opacity to lower the strength of this effect, because I think there's too much contrast added to this image. Now that looks much better. Now in order to add another effect, let's go ahead and click Add Filter, the blue button here at the top. Let's go ahead and select on Color Enhancer. And from here we have a handful of different options at our disposal. Now you can click on the More icon, and then drag your mouse over each of the different options to see how the effect will be applied. Now the one that captures my eye is the Red Enhancer because I feel it does a really good job of bringing out some of those latent desert colors found in this scene. Now once that's been selected, I want to further refine the color enhancement effect we've just applied. So let's go ahead and select the orange color hue found here under color range. And then let's pull up saturation just a little bit to bring out some of those orange hues. At the same time, I want to pull up the brightness of the orange hues to really help balance the luminosity of this color hue. Next, let's select on the yellow hue because I too want to bring out some of those colors that are found throughout this area. In fact, it was these yellow hues that really drew me into the scene to begin with. From here, let's go ahead and make the hue a little bit more of an orange color, pulling down the hue slider to the left. Let's also pull up our saturation a bit to really emphasize and make those colors pop. Lastly, I want to bring up the brightness of the yellow hue to really bring the focus on a lot of these areas found throughout this image. Now that looks pretty good, but I also noticed that by increasing the color through this color enhancer effect, I've also added a bit of the green hue found latently throughout the left side of this image. Now I can certainly try to adjust things through the green color hue, but because it's kind of hidden throughout the left side of this frame, it might be easier to do as a local adjustment. So let's go ahead and do just that. Let's move up here to the local adjustments tab and click on it. And then here under our adjustment, 
let's actually pull up our tint slider. You see tint when it comes to white balance, if you move it to the left, makes it more green, and to the right makes it more magenta. Either side actually counterbalances for the opposite. So by slightly pulling up our tint slider to the right, we actually might help remove some of that green hue. Once we're ready, let's go ahead and start painting in the effect. If you wish to double check where your mask has been painted in, you can use the shortcut Command or Control M depending on if you're a Mac or a PC. Now that gives us a little bit better idea of where our effect is being applied. Once you're ready, you can use the same keyboard shortcut to go back to the standard view. Now I also notice that I want to pull down a little bit of the brightness of this area found here in the same adjustment area that we just painted in because I want to make the main focus area it's a brisky point. So by darkening this area, we kind of focus the viewer's natural attention on this area here on the right. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and move over to the shadow and highlight slider and pull them down respectively. There, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click on the preview button to see what the effect did. Turned it off and back on. It's a subtle change, but I think it makes a pretty big difference. Now, before I jump into sharpening, let's do one more further adjustment back in the develop module. Now, one of my favorite adjustments is the tonal curve adjustment, and I do want to subtly apply it here to further refine that tonal contrast that we've applied throughout this image already. So to do this, let's click on the show more button and then select Curves. And then simply scroll down to the bottom here and you see the Curves panel has now been added. For those not familiar with the Tonal Curves adjustment, this is representative of your histogram. So if we click up here at the top of the screen under Histogram, you can see where our midtones are in the middle of the image, shadows on the left, and highlights on the right. This Tonal Curve adjustment is representative of that same histogram. So if I want to pull down our darks just a little bit, I simply click over here somewhere along the left of this bar graph slightly pull down. At the same time, we can go to the right, kind of our midtones, click and slightly drag up. That effectively adds a very subtle contrast adjustment to our image. Now that that's finished, I'm ready to go ahead and apply sharpening to this image. So let's jump back into the effects panel, click add filter, and then find sharpening. Now, just like with every effect at On One Photo Raw, you have a ton of options once you're here. Let's go ahead and click down on the More menu, and then find High Pass Sharpen. This is the same type of sharpening that I typically apply when I'm using something like Adobe Photoshop. But as you can see here, it is way too aggressive with this image. So we're going to make some slight adjustments to correct that. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this gearbox here at the top of this effect. And now you can see we have some more of the advanced features when it comes to applying this effect to our image. Now, not only do I feel that sharpening has been applied too aggressively to this image, but it's been applied universally across the entire frame. Both are things that I don't want to happen. So how do I fix this? First, let's go ahead and make sure we're applying sharpness to the right parts of the image, particularly this mountain range here with Zabriskie Point. A really easy way to do that is to click on this color picker and then select the pixels right around the area you want to affect. As you can see, that softened things around the top part of this, this image and everything kind of around the sides. It's mostly focusing on these kind of mid-tone pixels here. Now next, I want to drop the opacity of this sharpening down to about 70 or maybe a little bit lower. That lowers the strength of the sharpening layer that we've been applied. And if there's one thing I've learned over the years, it's essentially that both sharpening and saturation are two things that are typically overdone. So if you feel that you've applied sharpening correctly to your image, generally it's good to back off just a little bit in order to correct and balance things out. Now, if you're worried about applying sharpening to areas that you don't want to affect, you can use these three sliders here found in the middle of this sharpening effect. The highlight shadows and skin sliders are meant to allow you to protect these areas. This is important because you don't want to apply sharpening to your highlights or to your shadows because they can adversely add artifacts or noise back into your image. If you're worried, you can go ahead and move these sliders just a little bit to the right, protecting both of these types of pixels found throughout your images. Now that that's done, the last thing I want to do is apply a very subtle vignetting to this image, again allowing the viewer to fixate and focus on all these beautiful patterns found here at the bottom of Zabriskie Point. 
So to do that, let's jump back into the develop module. Go ahead and click on show more and select vignette. Now you have a few different options here with the vignette in the develop module, but I want to focus on using the big softy for this image. It's one that I find myself commonly using throughout many of my images because I like the way that it applies the vignetting across the frame. That being said, I feel that it's dark in the corners a little bit too much. So let's slightly pull up the brightness just a little bit to balance that out. Now if we check the vignette by checking the preview box, that's before and that's after. Again, a subtle adjustment, but I think it goes a long way in helping keep the viewer fixated on what I want them to focus on, which is the main story of this image, Zabriskie Point and all these beautiful colors and patterns. And there you have it. I'm really happy with the results of how we process this image. Let's go ahead and check the preview box here at the bottom of the image to see where we started at and where we ended up. Now to me, that's a much more compelling and interesting and engaging image. If you were flipping through your Instagram or Facebook feeds, you might actually stop and take a look at this image compared to how we started off with. We did a great job of focusing the viewer's attention and detail on all these patterns and colors and textures found here in Zabriskie Point itself. We brought up some of the tonal contrast and made some strategic choices in terms of enhancing the color and specific aspects of this image. We also painted in a local adjustment to help fix for some of the color tonage that was a little bit off, a little bit green here on the left side of the image, and we added sharpening in a vignette. The key to me when it comes to post-processing is making sure that my images still feel realistic even though we certainly enhance their stylized aspects of our image. And in this case, I think we did a pretty good job. This image looks realistic and is pretty indicative of what it felt like when I was standing there this morning taking this image in Death Valley National Park. I want to take a quick second and thank all of you for listening in today. This has been On One Inspiration, and my name is Colby Brown. I appreciate your time, and please feel to reach out if you have any questions. Take care, and have a great week.